developing and should take responsibility on things that they're also contributing to, and well, they should okay. also help. Well, we state that uh, the developed nations have literally 70% of CO2 emissions, but they only cover 20% of the world. So they're obviously uh, committing well, who's so much more CO2. Who's currently producing the CO2 emissions? As we stated, the developed countries have released 70% of them. So you, said, you say they have released the most, like, just CO2 emissions. But who's currently releasing the most? Like, in this day and time, who's releasing the most? What do you mean, releasing the most? Like, who? Like what do you mean, who? who? As in, like, developed or developed developing? Developed or developing. Okay, developing, as they stated, they've released Okay, emissions. so you're basically saying that developing has a huge contribution to releasing CO2 emissions, but they shouldn't have to do anything about it. They don't have as much of a big, uh, as a... But they're still contributing. But they don't have the resources. Georgia, got this. tells us is that we have this burden as the pro uh, provides a solvency. My plans don't actually provide a definition for mitigate, so let me just read off my definition of mitigate again. Make less severe serious or painful. And there's no reason to believe that this definition offers any uh, any precursor that we have to be able to do. There's no reason to believe that we have to have a way to solve it. My plans don't give us any reason to believe that this burden actually exists in this round. They just state it and so we don't accept their burden. We actually provide in our framework that we don't have to provide for solvency because, again, there's no precursor for us to provide solvency. Now, uh, they talk about in their first contention about, in their subpoint A, how it's not human's fault. As my partner brought up in Crossfire, 90% of all scientists agree that it's, uh, the causes of global warming are human-related. So, sure, there may be some heating and cooling periods on the Earth, but this one is extreme. We see an extreme amount of rise in the ocean levels and extreme uh, changes in temperature, and that's because of human cost. They don't actually tell, give us a single source that says it's not human cost, um, because they can't find a single scientist who says that. Now, they talk about these sunspots in this NASA report. I've actually read this NASA report, and this NASA report actually doesn't say that global warming is caused by sunspots. And that have, may have a very, very minor impact on uh, the Earth's temperature, but it does not wholly affect it. The NASA report specifically says that. So my opponents are uh, uh, misconstruing this report. So now let's move on to their second contingent. They talk about how it's irreversible. The first thing they say, again, is that most of the problems from the sun, and we can't solve the sun. Uh, I just see my uh, point about the sun earlier. Now, the second thing they say is that it won't work, that there's just uh, no way that we can do this. Let's, and I have a couple of texts for this. The first thing is that, again, we don't have to provide solvency. The second thing is uh, we actually see that uh, we are using less oil and less carbon emitting things than we ever have been. Or, or, we're slowing down our consumption, excuse me, in the United States. We saw in uh, Southern Europe, they've actually reversed their use of oil. So even if we don't have to provide solvency, we see people that are already lessening the use of oil. Now, uh, the final thing they talk about is that it doesn't matter anyway because other countries like China are still going to be emitting CO2. I have three attacks to this. The first is that you can see in our framework that we don't say that developing nations can't also mitigate climate change at the same time as developed nations. There's no reason to believe that that's true. So it doesn't, uh, these two are not mutually exclusive. The second attack against this is that we see that developed nations have produced 70% of all of carbon dioxide, but they only represent 20% of the population of the world. So again, the developed nations have caused most of the problem. Um, and so that's why they have the responsibility because they've caused vast amount of the problem and um, these developing nations have, haven't really seen that. Now the very, uh, third thing I'd like to talk about is my opponents bring up China. They brought this up in their uh, first cost file. Now China, sure, does use more carbon dioxide than the United States, I'll admit that. The problem is that China is the only example of a developing nation that uses more carbon dioxide than developed nations. No other developing nation uses more carbon dioxide. Um, so when we actually gather up developing nations versus developed nations, we can see that developing nations still use significantly less carbon dioxide, or er, use less oil and thus release less carbon dioxide. So again, they're just kind of picking out one example as opposed to like Zimbabwe, which doesn't produce nearly as much carbon dioxide. That's just kind of an unfair uh, parallel to make. And so when we look at these, uh, 
when we look at the fact that developing nations don't produce as much CO2, they don't have that responsibility that developed nations do. And with that, I urge you to put Violet to first. Thank you. or not. And I'm going to say that they have to provide solvency, otherwise we have no idea like how the pro is actually going to fix the problem. Um, if they don't tell us that, if they tell us that like there's no way that they are not going to tell us like why the problem or how the problem is going to be uh, solved, I'm not going to understand like why we should solve the problem if they're not going to tell me like how it would be solved. Uh, I believe that it goes together hand in hand. They have to prove uh, how it's going or how it's going to be solved to explain why we have to solve it. Now to their first contention about moral entities. Um, here the main argument is that like governments are moral entities, therefore they have a moral obligation to do the job. Um, but the idea is that like while this may be true, they don't have a moral obligation when they don't actually have the ability to solve the problem. Uh, what they would just be doing is harming their own citizens by taking away fundamental resources and money uh, away from the, from the people. So the job, uh, government's primary job is to actually protect its citizens and provide for the citizens. However, if they're going to go against something that they can't actually stop, they're only going to be taking away from the citizens and uh, going against their fundamental job that was stated in the Constitution. Uh, so what we actually see is they don't have a moral obligation because they're going against their fundamental duties. Second contention about like how it's a historical responsibility. Um, however, what we actually see is that like <laughs> countries have already paid their debt. Um, by developing everything, they're giving all of the developed technology that they have to developing and non-developed countries. So they've already paid their debt because the other countries are not going to have to go through an industrial, re industrial revolution to fix the problem. So they're actually already cutting back on emissions um, with every other country. So like they've already paid their debt, so they don't actually have a historical, res a historical responsibility that my opponents are talking about. Um, third contention, Subwene. They're talking over here about how like starvation um, and a bunch of how like climate change is bad because it'll start people. Um, however, what they don't realize is that first we can adapt to everything. Um, humans have the unique ability to adapt to their environment and environmental changes. Humans are actually very good at adapting. Um, we survived an ice age. Um, I mean, we've survived quite a bit in our past. Um, so we actually would have the ability to survive quite a few uh, or quite a few changes that we would see with climate change that would not even be comparable to an ice age. Um, so like humans would have the innate ability to adapt to this, so we don't actually have to worry about starvation because the problem's not actually going to occur. Next they talk about how like uh, there's a higher CO2 or, or like how plants are dying and stuff like that. However, I'm going to refute this by saying that if countries are actually putting out more CO2, that's actually more beneficial because plants actually run on CO2. They have to have CO2 to actually survive uh, and to make their uh, glucose or whatever they have to make to uh, actually survive. So, like, if we base our entire lives off of agriculture, an increase in CO2 would not necessarily be bad because we would increase plant life. So, point B. Uh, here it's talking about adaptation again and how, like, we would have competition for resources. Again, I'm going to apply the same adaptation argument and say that, like, humans would have the ability to adapt and we wouldn't have to actually deal with the problem anyway. Now into my case. Um, I've already talked about the framework debate, so I'll move on to the contention, contention one. Contention one. Um, here she talks about how, like, Na the NASA, I'm misreporting the NASA study. However, I don't actually believe she read the NASA study because I have the entire thing here, um, and I can show you what it actually says. Uh, she's just kind of, I guess, she has no other argument against it, so she's just kind of throwing something out there. Um, but anyway, she also talks about how, like, I have no scientists to confirm that it's from the sun. Again, this is false. I have NASA to prove it, um, and I can provide the evidence if you want to see it. Now, um, she also talks about how, like, she has 90% of scientists say from it, it's from humans. Again, I'm going to prefer NASA because I don't know like how they conducted all of these 90% of studies that are scientists. I doubt they went to every single scientist in the world and actually asked them how they feel. Um, so I'm going to say that like, NASA is going to prefer Oh, I'm excited about this. <laughs> Should I? Okay, I have first question. Uh, Jake, ready? Yes. No, Jake, you cannot jump in. No, no, who's They're pro. Okay, I'm No, they're con. We're pro. I'm sorry, they're con. <laughs> Okay. Really uh, 
Um, okay, so let's start off. Does the NASA thing ever specifically say that uh, all of global warming is caused by sunspots? No. No, okay, now let's move on. Um, yeah, you're done. You just said no. Okay, now, uh, you talked about this industrial revolution critique. Yeah. Um, so, are you saying, okay, under this critique, we would see that, uh, first of all, critiques are not allowed in public form, but that doesn't matter. Ooh. Um, it is a critique. Um, so now, let's look at the fact that, in, uh, we st we're using more oil than ever before, and we're out of the industrial revolution. So, how does that make sense? First, we're expanding. So we're not actually going through like an industrial revolution where we're going to have an explosion. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, like, and what are we helping the developing countries right now do? Right. Okay, so what we'd be doing is we'd be providing the technology that we already have, and they wouldn't have to go through an industrial re revolution and have okay, an explosion but we're using, of CO2. You're not answering my question. My question was, why are we using more oil than ever if we're done with an industrial revolution? That, like, no, you're not answering no, the question. I just explained, like, we're expanding. There's nothing we can okay, do Okay, but about we're that. not in an industrial revolution, okay. so but we're still using that, more oil. Like, but the idea is that, like, they feel their burden because if other countries have to go through an industrial revolution, there's going to be an explosion. Um, however, if they don't, okay, then it's going to be a whole said, lot. We're going through an explosion, but we're not in industrial no, revolution, so they're going to go through an you're explosion, too. You're blowing it out of proportion what I'm saying. I'm saying we're expanding. We're not exploding. Okay, you but, actually said exploding. But, no, okay, expanding. expanding. If we're expanding, and we're not in industrial revolution, and other places are expanding, and they're also not in industrial revolution, why does that matter? Okay. It doesn't, because I'm we saying, still have CO2 produced, and it, there's, there's okay, nothing we're changing about that. Yeah. All right, so what I'm saying is, like, we don't have to actually, like, other countries don't actually have to have an explosion in the amount of resources they have to use to find the technology. You're not needed. understanding my question. My question is, why are we using more oil now than we were during the Industrial Revolution? Right. And I'm trying to get to that, but you won't let me pivotal. finish. What I'm saying is, like, we're expanding. Yeah, we're going to increase oil or oil use and everything else. However, the other countries that are developing uh, or not developed yet, that will develop in the future, don't actually have to have an explosion. They're going to expand, sure. However, like the... Okay, China. The, it's okay. exploding. Okay. So, like, yeah, why would you possibly say that other countries aren't going to explode when China's exploding? Because also, we're giving when are we ever going to stop expanding? I think that's the point of an economy, to expand. Okay. Again, it's the idea of explosion versus a small increase over time. Like, with an explosion, with, like, an industrial revolution, you're going to have a huge increase in a short amount of time, which is going but to hurt you're the saying that all of this oil consumption is because we're expanding. When are we never, when are, okay. are we going to stop okay. expanding? While we That's may expand, it's not paradox. going to be, like, a, a huge explosion all at once. It's going to destroy but the environment. But we're using more oil now than we were Okay, again, revolution. it's not a huge expansion all at once. It's okay. a gradual you're increase over time. You're ignoring the question, so let's move on. Uh, so the framework debate. Why is there a precursor to, uh, to a moral obligation that we have to be okay. able to solve for it? So, like, why would we have to say we should solve something if we don't know how we're going to solve it? Like, it doesn't make any sense to say... Uh, well, I mean, I, I sh we should cure cancer, but we don't know how to cure cancer. Okay, we're going to take a minute and a half. Film or start.